Okay guys, so here's another comic book review from another comic that was contributed by our good friend on the channel, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, hope you're watching. And this is going to be an image comic in a way by the name of Son of Merlin. Now, Son of Merlin comes from the same line from Image that also did Bushido Way of the Warrior, which was that vampire versus samurai comic that I, while in concept was a cool idea, just did not work for me. It just didn't, it really fell apart towards the end, but the artwork was really good. And that's kind of what I'm looking at here with Son of Merlin, is that it's very much picture over story. It is very much some really good artwork, some really good covers by uh, Stephen Selchik, I think that's how you say his name, from the Image Comics uh, uh, Sunstone and Swing. Both uh, interesting comics, definitely not for kids. Uh, I will say that right now. But yeah, um, this comic, Son of Merlin, is another retake on the um, Arthurian legend that focuses on uh, Merlin, who in this continuity is the nephew of, Mo of Morgan Le Fay. And in here, he has been killed, and his son Simon is now given a book that will grant him uh, great power to defeat Mor uh, Morgan Le Fay, who is now a kind of like a m magic Lex Luthor type character. She's kind of like if Luthor and Cersei were fused into one character. That's how she would be. That's how she would kind of be. Really, is is that kind of a combination? Really. So, what did I think of this book? What did I think of? this uh, book in particular. Eh, like I said, I feel like everyone who does the Arthurian legend just kind of, and tries to bring it into a modern take really misses the mark. I don't, feel, I don't think I've seen a movie or read a comic where, it, unless it's outside of Marvel, mind you. Marvel seems to be the only one who get Marvel and sometimes DC really take the whole Arthurian legend and make it work. Well, no. I will say that the other one who got the Arthurian legend and bringing it to, and, and modernizing it was Greg Weissman at Gargoyles of what he did with uh, King Arthur and uh, all of Avalon and everything else that ensued with that. That worked pretty well, but here it just kind of feels like we've been here, done that. This, it, while it feels very much, it is a five-issue miniseries, and it really tries to cram in so much in here. Now, the character of Simon himself is a, he's a scholar and he believes very much in science. And yeah, that whole storyline of him being a scientist learning how to use magic and all that, and maybe it, it, they try to like explain, like explore, oh, what if a scientist learned magic? You know, would he still believe it, it's magic or would he call it sci you know, advanced science? No, he just throws it out the window. It's like, no, it's totally magic. So they don't really do anything of, you know, of great interest, like, that would be cool if, you know, Simon had to either A, learn to use magic, or, you know, be like, oh, it's just, you know, science that we don't fully understand yet, so how about I, you know, study it and master it, and shit like that. That was kind of my thing, really, with this, is that it had great ideas, much like with, um, uh, much with the Bushido story. But it was very much, it was very evident that it's very much picture over story. And for what it is, the artwork by the artist Zid in here is, you know, it is very good. It's very bright and vibrant. And the magic looks, you know, it's breathtaking at some points. It's very, um, you know, bright and colorful and dark and moody when it needs to be. But the story itself just feels like it's very pictures over story. I do, however, want to give this group, this um, this group from Image called Heroes and Villains Entertainment. I do want to give them one more chance. There is one more comic from their line that got me interested, and maybe it will pull me back. Um, because, like I said, the concepts are interesting. They don't go anywhere, though. There is one more comic I do want to check out from them before I give my full thoughts on Heroes and Villains Entertainment. And be like, eh, two strikes out for me. But maybe the third time's a charm. There is a comic called Tracker, which is a FBI werewolf story, and you know me, I'm a sucker for werewolves, so maybe I'll give that, and maybe um, that comic will bring me around if I ever get around, if I ever get a chance to read that. And, yeah. All in all, there's some great concept in here, but they don't really go too deep into it. I feel, yeah, I just feel like they, you know, a lot of these writers just you know, want to make the King Arthur legend, like, way more cooler than it is. Fun fact, the legend of King Arthur is actually really cool on its own. You don't need to fucking update it and try to say like, oh, this really happened and the real Art King Arthur legend is dumb. You know, this is what really happened. This is the real remake. No, the King Arthur legend is, you know, cool on its own. 
you should check out a movie called Excalibur. It'll cha it'll really uh, press home that whole idea. So anyway, so there you go, guys. Um, Want to thank Chris for sending me this comic as always. Uh, Chris, I uh, know you're watching, so thank you, brother, for this. I know I shit talk this comic, and I know you got it for me, but you know you did tell me to tell it like it is in every review. So I'm just saying, I'm telling it like it is. So there you go. Um, yeah. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much my review for uh, Son of Merlin. And if you are curious, uh, just comment below. Let me know what you guys thought of it, if you have read it. And um, once again, hope you all enjoyed this. I am DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.